Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Back out, back with Catherine, Fitchburg Historical Society, talking about the O'Brien Farm, uh, part of the family there. And uh, we we started the conversation last month kind of talking about the, the house itself uh, growing up around here. We ended on a... Uh, uh, I would call it, I don't know if you say somber no, but with that tornado passing by here, um, which certainly glad everybody was okay. Mm -hmm. um, lost some good trees and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. But uh, now we got to pick up on uh, a little bit more here. Now that you've been here, the siblings, the neighborhood, we still haven't even talked about the railroad being right in front of your house, which a lot of people can't say that. So uh, take it away, Catherine. Thank you. Well, we did have now the, uh, the state uh, Badger Trail was of course the Illinois Central Railroad. And uh, when I was a child, the train went right by here uh, twice a day into Madison and back out again. Uh, I remember uh, waving at the uh, tr train engineers and they were so friendly. They would always toot their horn if they saw us children out in the yard. Uh, so it was fun. And I learned to count by uh, the train coming through because <laughs> you know there's a lot of cars and we always count the cars. And, and uh, uh, you know, it was part of part of uh, our fun uh, with, with the trains. Uh, we also walked the rails. Of course, our parents were very worried about us when the trains were coming by. We always had the idea of, when are the trains coming? Just be alert to, to them, uh, watch, watch for trains. Uh, but we loved walking the rails, and I think that was part of my um, you know, uh, balancing and getting uh, other, other children sometimes go to do uh, gymnastics. We had the rails out here so we could practice our, our balance. Uh, one of the interesting things about right here in this location was there was a milk uh, depot stop for the train. Uh, before I, was, I lived here, so more in the 20s and 30s, so the local farmers would bring their cans of milk here to be picked up and taken into Madison Dairy. Um, and uh, uh, when the Gillette family lived here, um, it was interesting that the farming done here was, uh, Rufus Gillette was uh, a very progressive farmer, I would characterize him as, and he grew soybeans, which was an unusual crop during that time. And uh, so the local farmers would make, kind of tease him about it. And uh, one Halloween night in uh, about 1918 or so, um, the local farmers at night uh, snuck up to the depot here, the, mil the um, milk stop depot, and painted the sign Beanville on, uh, on the uh, depot. And so it used to be the Stoner, uh, Stoner Prairie Stop. After that, it was known as the Beanville Stop. <laughs> so uh, it, was, uh, it was fun and all done in uh, good humor uh, with the uh, Gillette family and the local farmers. And then we would walk to uh, to school when we were here in the in the 1950s. We had a one-room school. It was the original Stoner School. We have Stoner Prairie School now as part of the Verona Area School District. But this was the uh, this was the uh, original Stoner School, one-room school, which is about a mile to the south of us. Um, and we uh, we would walk to school or or bike to when we got a little bit older. It was. Uh, we didn't have bus transportation, so it was up to us to get to school on our own. But that's that long walk there, yeah, five miles walk. back. All that. Uh, <laughs> Actually, it was only hill. one. It was only one mile, but there was. Sure, a you got to <laughs> exaggerate that a little bit. Come on, that's all about the storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It was just long and hard. Yeah, there and you go. The winters were just bitter, and <laughs> <laughs> feet of, several feet of snow we had to walk through. But um, no, it was good. And then I had uh, across the uh, road uh, my two uncles and. Uh, and uh, one of my uncle's family, seven children, my grandparents lived, so we had our cousins to walk to school with, and then we had cousins uh, to the south of us, too, a family of nine. So lots of, lots of good times with, uh, with cousins and family here, uh, here in Fitchburg. What was the primary uh, farming operation while you were here? Was it cows? Uh, well, let's talk what was the farming part of it uh, in the barns, but also crop-wise. Sure. Uh, very, very much actually up to uh, how it has been even even recently. My uh, cousins Tom and Pat O'Brien had a dairy operation that they have uh, actually just retired from, but dairy farming, uh, so milking the cows, and my, um, my dad busy getting up very early in the morning to do that morning and in the evening. It's a very... Um, very consistent job. You don't uh, you don't have days off usually from that milking, cropping. Uh, there would be uh, grain and corn primarily, um, oats, 
Um, and so that would those would be the crops that would be grown. Um, busy seasons, of course, in the in the summertime. Uh, long hours out in the field. My dad was um, loved the field work, though, and he was he was a perfectionist, so he always drove the tractor as straight as he could. And the farmers um, actually uh, sort of. There was sort of a competition and inspection of each other's fields, uh, as I guess in any profession. So um, my dad took pride in really having very uh, straight rows for the corn when he planted it. And, and uh, I remember driving the uh, tractor for him when he did, uh, when we um, did the, uh, the hay, picked up the hay. Uh, in bales, and he always piled those bales high and straight and beautifully done. So I have I have fond memories of uh, of his uh, his skill in 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 his profession of farming. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a quite a quite a story, and uh, you know, again, this house is still uh, living up to the test of time. I would say uh, the area certainly has changed throughout the years. Um, well, what's that one memory that always comes back to you uh, for growing up here uh, in the area? Oh, I think the closeness of the community. We knew everyone. Um, the local farmers uh, were connected with each other. They would, uh, if if uh, there were uh, in the fall, like harvesting, the threshing, um, there would always be a gathering of uh, gathering of gathering of the farmers to help one another. Everyone knew each other. And then our small country schools kept us together as a community too. So I think that closeness, that close-knitness and uh, feeling that you could rely on on your neighbors. If you ever had problems, you, you didn't have far to go. Yeah, I just love the the early history of Fitchburg. I think it's it's really really something else. So, Catherine, uh, really appreciate the letting us come out here and uh, and visit. And uh, hopefully, we can come back uh, soon and uh, have another chat with you. Thank you so much, Jamie. All right, that's Catherine from the Fitchburg Historical Society. Stop on by second floor of the library. They got everything you want to know about Fitchburg up there and more. And check their website out as well. All right, we'll take a quick break. You are watching Talking Fitchburg.